Hello and welcome back to the Mindset Project Podcast. My name is Lewis Condy and my aim is to give you the tools to develop and improve your mindset. By drawing on my own experiences as a competitive swimmer, as well as the opinions and experiences of other incredible individuals, I hope to expose you to an alternative way of thinking. And in doing so, I hope that inspires some sort of personal growth. I believe that through mindset development, we can strive physically, mentally and emotionally. I hope you're all doing well, staying positive and staying healthy. So let's get on to it. Welcome back to the Mindset Project podcast. It has been far too long, but we are finally back. Now, I hope you're all doing great and staying safe. So this episode, I'm just going to talk about everything which has happened since the last episode, what I've been planning for the future of the podcast, and anything else that crosses my mind. So let's rewind back to July, August 2021, where I decided to take a break from podcasting. And it was mostly down to the fact that I felt like I was starting to become very, very inconsistent with the episodes and at the same time I was getting back into the pool after the Covid pandemic and I hadn't raced well at the meet that very same summer and it sort of made me realise that I can't realistically focus on the podcast properly, focus on everything I'm doing in the pool and then obviously university on the top of that which was slowly coming around the corner. So the podcast was put on hold and I think I definitely made the correct decision in doing so because my last year of university was an absolute riot. So it was September 2021 and it was my last ever freshers at university and as it was my last year and since we'd basically missed out on a year and a half of our student life, I decided to do lots of spontaneous things. Like I said to myself, this is the year that I'm going to be spontaneous, I'm going to do things and take up opportunities that come my way. Um, and because I wouldn't get this opportunity again, right? And the main thing I did was I tried at lacrosse. Now, I'm not sure if you who are listening have been to university or at university currently, but my university, we always had a week where we could try out different clubs, societies, and sports and that sort of stuff. And it was called Give It A Go, because that is exactly what you did. You give, gave these clubs a, um, a go, you met new people, see if you would like them, join them if you wanted to. Now, lacrosse has always intrigued me as a sport, probably because I'm a huge fan of MTV's Team Wolf and I tried it once in high school when our school got a huge upgrade in all our equipment and their facilities. Apart from that, I've had zero experience whatsoever playing lacrosse. But I was sitting in my room one night catching up on lectures and I really wanted to try something new. Now, I wanted to do a sport that would sort of complement my swimming and would t- wouldn't take up too much time of my time because obviously at this point I was still sort of transitioning back into the pool and getting back into the swing of things and I thought about doing a sport that required some form of running as this would speed up my fitness quickly and accelerate my transition into the pool. Now I thought about rugby but the injury risk was way too high, like even touch rugby there was some risk of injury there. And then I thought about athletics, but again, I know too many athletes who have carried an injury in athletics. So I sort of weighed up the cons and pros and I thought, you know, the injury risk is way too high in those um, sports, so I'm probably going to avoid them. Now, lacrosse popped up in my head and I thought, you know what, maybe I should just try it. I, I was like, obviously, I want to be spontaneous, so I may as well. So I was like, fuck it, let's go. I messaged the social media page and that was me going to their give it a go session. And the funny thing about this story is that normally when I go to meet a new group of people or people I have no, I've never met before and they're completely new, I get really, really nervous. And it's almost sort of like extreme introversion. But I didn't feel any of that, like I didn't feel nervous at all, which was really, really weird. Now, I only went to along, along to them, have a bit of a laugh and meet new people. I had zero intentions of joining, nor did I have any idea about what was going to happen in the weeks and months that followed. So at the give it a go, we had just a, we just had a bit of fun, getting used to passing, catching, using the stick because the cross, in my opinion, is a bit of an odd sport. Um, it's a kind of like a hybrid between rugby and hockey. It has the aggression of rugby, the sort of athleticism as rugby, but uses stick to pass, catch, and shoot 
which is similar to hockey, but not exactly. And apologies to any other crossers out there listening who I have completely butchered your sport and compared it to something that it isn't. Um, but back onto the main story, I had picked up, it up very quickly, almost instantly, and the co-captains actually kept asking me if I had ever played previously because as someone who was ex- apparently extremely new to the sport, which I was, I happened to be quite good at it. Now, this sort of boosted my ego quite a bit, um, I'm not going to lie about that, and I generally thought like I was going to be the next big lacrosse star because obviously these guys were saying that I was really, really good for someone who had never played it before. And, you know, it kind of gave me a spring in my step and really boosted my confidence to levels which I hadn't seen in a long time. And the lacrosse team were struggling for numbers and they barely had enough people to even form a team. So I did kind of feel bad for that reason and because I did enjoy it and I really liked it, I joined. Even when I had zero intention of doing so, like I've said, and since joining each session was beginning to become the highlight of my week, you know, I could go along, have a bit of fun with these guys who I instantly called like my friends, like, do you know when you meet people for the first time and you know you just instantly click? This is exactly what joining lacrosse was like for me. There was about seven or eight guys who were there and we just instantly clicked. And obviously I could let off steam as well from the pool and was able to do something that I happened to be quite good at, um, which was also a bonus. And within a week I had mastered cradling with the short stick and for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it is simply the action you do to ensure the ball doesn't leave the net in your stick. And cradling allows you to travel with the ball at speed, with the ball in the stick when you're running, you're dodging, which is very very important and you'd probably be quite shit if you could not do it. So I even tried to be a bit of a show off and tried practicing with my weaker hand with my left now it wasn't perfect but it was quite good for my left hand so i rocked up to the tuesday session all smug because i'd finally cracked the lacrosse essential on both hands and this session wasn't like any other because it was the session we had before our first game and when i turned up i was told i wouldn't be using the short stick i would in fact be using the long pole and as the captain wanted me to go into into defense now my first reaction was are you fucking kidding me like after all that practice i have done on the short stick mastering the cradling on both hands you go and change my stick like at first i was a bit mad i'm not going to lie but again after only using the pole for that two hour session i had picked it up fairly quickly and for context, the long pole in lacrosse is twice the size of a short stick and is about six foot. Um, it's completely metal, so it's really heavy. And it takes some skill to use the long pole well. And I actually started to feel really grateful that the captain thought I was good enough to even use it. Um, I mean, it could have just been down to the fact that we did lack numbers and someone had to go on defense. Um, and it's something I probably won't really ever know what the reasoning behind that to be honest um so that was the start of this and i absolutely loved every second of the sport um and i think because it was so different to swimming and that it was a team sport um i was sort of exposed to this culture that i hadn't really experienced before now swimming is a bit of an odd one because yes it is an individual sport and to some degree it is a team sport as well because you tra- you do train with other people but it's probably more individual in the sense that you only rely on yourself in training yes um, the people in your lane and the people in your team you sort of use them to help motivate you and whatnot but when you compare it to lacrosse lacrosse is like a true team sport where you actually rely on everyone in your team to help you in training um, and especially in the game Um, because obviously like if you're doing drills and stuff communication is key in any team sport so if there's like a breakdown in communication obviously you can't train as efficiently whereas you don't really have that issue in swimming Um, so we definitely had our fair share of losses more than we did win but we were always struggling for numbers and you know at times we ended up having to play eights instead of tens um, because it was that 
bad. <laughs> but the team culture we had was nothing like I'd ever experienced before. And, you know, if I could explain, ex probably describe it in one word, I'd probably say electric. Like, that's just, it was just a really, really positive culture. Um, and I hold all the lacrosse boys I played with in such high regard and I generally made like friends for life but that is not all that happened with, with lacrosse. So one of the boys that was on the team had played lacrosse for years and was on the Scotland national team. Yep, Scotland do have a team for lacrosse. Um, and he had spoken about there being trials on for the national team which were held around the end of October if I remember correctly. Um, it wasn't until the week before that I'd started to think about going. Now, I wouldn't say I was the best lacrosse player, even though it kind of felt like that because my team were sort of making it out like I was quite good. Um, and obviously this also was the year that I said I'm going to be spontaneous, I'm just going to do things that are completely random and, you know, I thought it won't hurt going along and seeing what it was actually like. And <clears throat> I couldn't really, I couldn't make it because I had shifts at work um, that that weekend and I just thought it was a bit um, short notice to say that I couldn't work um, and obviously we didn't really have anyone that could have covered, obviously I got paid. Um, so I ended up not being able to go to that trial. So I emailed the organiser and he said I could go to the next training session which was held in December. So that is what happened. Now, the training camp was down in the west coast of Scotland in a town called Largs, which was a two hour or so train journey. So I got the first train there as I had no idea where I was going and the first train got in enough time for me to work out where this place was. And this weekend was pretty, pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Um, <clears throat> so there ended up being about 40 to 50 guys there that weekend which is a lot more than the five to six guys I was used to at training at university. So it, was, it wasn't such a shock, but it was different. Um, and these guys also had years of experience more than I had. And I only had been playing for about 12 weeks, maybe, maybe a little bit more. So it felt like I was a bit out of place, but you have to do those sort of things in order to grow. Now, one of the coaches there started noticing that I had no idea what I was doing. So I ca he came over and helped me out. I got a bit of one-to-one -one coaching with some of the different coaches, which again, I was super, super grateful for. And they also said I was relatively good for only playing a couple of months. And what he suggested I would be good at would be playing in long pole midfield. So for a bit of context, for people who don't know the sort of ins and out of lacrosse, you have nine players, you have three attackmen, three midfielders and three defence. Now the three defencemen all have a long pole and the midfielders and attackmen have the short pole. Now you can have a midfielder who uses a long pole and I, I actually think this is probably the, probably the hardest position to be in um, in the team because having a long pole is obviously hard um, harder because it's heavier you have to be faster more athletic um, because obviously the defensemen obviously defend your goal and the attackmen are obviously at the opponent's goal trying to score a goal now the midfielders are sort of the middlemen between the defenders and the attackmen so they'll obviously take the ball off the defensemen away from your goal and they will try and either like outmaneuver the other midfielders and attackmen on the opposite team and try and pass it over to the attackmen in order to shoot. Now the midfielders can also score and shoot as well as long as there's like enough people on your side of the field. Um, so like I said you can, ha you can have um, a long pole midfielder and it's probably the hardest position that you're going to get because like I say the pole is heavy you've got to be fast you've got to be athletic so I was kind of like shocked that they had said that um, and obviously this was a big thing because these were actual coaches who have played internationally and have coached internationally so it was quite a big deal and another thing to mention about this weekend was that it was in really really amazing facilities um, 
down in lacrosse, um, not lacrosse, largs, sorry, um, like, the bathroom we had was like a sort of wet room and like every single thing that you can think of that you need in the bathroom was there it was absolutely massive um the beds were super super comfy all the pillows the bedding was like super soft um like it was all designed specifically to have the best night's sleep like even the they had um for the windows they had three like set sets of blinds so they had blinds the first set, um, set of blinds were like the ones you pull so like the sort of slatted ones and then they had like a plastic cover that would go over them so that would block out the sun and then they had like sort of material sort of curtains that would go over the plastic ones so it would completely block out any light coming in from the window um, and this was sort of to just make sure that when you were sleeping like the light was completely black blacked out which was Honestly, it was the best night's sleep I ever had in my life, and I was only there for one night. <laughs> um, but yeah, the facilities were absolutely amazing. And the first day was the Saturday, and we trained six to nine, no, twelve to six non-stop. We had no breaks; it was just constant graft. And because it was on the west coast, it was windy. It was December, so it was absolutely freezing. And to top it off, it was absolutely chucking it down with rain. So it was a wonderful weekend. Now, there was a team meeting that evening which just sort of went over the expe expectations of the team. The calendar towards the lacrosse, um, World Lacrosse Championships, which are taking place this year. And amongst other things that you would normally expect to get in a team chat. Now, the interesting thing here was the head coach talked about the qualities that they were looking for in people to add to the team and they emphasised that they weren't necessarily looking for the best players, you know, like the most athletic players, but people who had the qualities of good, good teammates, that's the word, and I found this interesting because it almost felt like they were speaking directly to me, you know, like I wasn't obviously the best player, I didn't really have a lot of experience, I had no idea about the rules of lacrosse or any tactics or whatnot and obviously I wasn't the best player compared to all the other guys that were there who had all the experience that I didn't have but I would say I am a great athlete you know I'm hard working I'm determined I am motivated I have a growth mindset I'm willing to make mistakes in order to learn as well so I was sort of matching all the qualities that they were listing and they were looking for so I thought you know how could I not make the World Championships team? Like, it would have been pretty epic. Like, in my mind, I was just thinking about, imagine how epic it would be if I qualified and was chosen for the Lacrosse World Championships 2023. Um, however, as you'll soon find out in this episode, something else happened instead. So the chat finished at 9pm and we were told we, were start, we would start training the next day at 6am. So the next day it was a 6am start and finished at 3pm, so 9pm non-stop, again with no breaks. Although we did have breakfast, we didn't have a break for lunch or that sort of thing, Like, which you know, as a swimmer is extremely frustrating when you consume food almost every hour that you are awake. And the second day was slightly different in that we did a lot of testing, so we did maximum plank hold, squats, bench press, agility exercises and the one I dreaded the most, the yo-yo test, where I actually had to run, or at least try to run. <laughs> so we started the day with a yoga session, which was music to my ears, like I love yoga, I'm fairly flexible, so in my head I was thinking, you know, this is my time to redeem myself for basically looking like a spare part the day before, um, as I had no idea what I was doing. So I did everything fairly easy as, in my opinion, it was a very basic yoga session. Even the performance coach who took it didn't look as flexible as I was. And throughout the session I could hear whisperings, I could feel people looking and pointing at me just because of my flexibility. And once it had finished I got questions were like, how did you do that? Like, you're, you're so incredible, you're so flexible, like, what? how do you do that, etc. So again, this sport was boosting my ego once again. Um, and it continued into the testing part of the day where my results ended up being better than I think the team average across most of the like the weightlifting ones um, so the guys were shocked at my standing long jump which I think was over 1.5 meters which I think was probably one of the best um, within the group of guys that were there 
and um, I had one of the longest held planks which I think was over 3 minutes 30 seconds, something about that and I squatted almost double my body weight and bench a lot given my weight um, weight height ratio. So uh, I excelled in all the physical tests bar from one, the yo-yo test. Now in my defence I am a swimmer, like my body is not designed for the land, it's designed for the pool and my running is bloody awful. It's shockingly bad and it's something I'm looking to work on this year as a New Year's resolution. So that was kind of that weekend and all in all it was a great experience like I'm super grateful to have that had that opportunity and I ended up going back to the training camp although this was online because there was like an outbreak of Covid and restrictions came in again so it was moved to online and they asked me to go back as I but as I was coming into the swimming long course season I had to prioritise that, you know, and in most cases the lacrosse training camps fell either on the weekend of a competition or just before, and I just didn't want to risk getting an injury just before me, like that was a non-negotiable for me, um, and because of this I didn't end up going to any more camps after the January one, which I was really, really gutted about because obviously I was going to probably tell listening so far, I really enjoyed um, the lacrosse and I studied all the materials we were given regarding positioning, tactics etc and I practiced a lot with my stick skills and I actually had adjusted my gym program so that I could, I would get swimming and lacrosse benefits from the exercises I did so I was starting to sort of hybrid my training for lacrosse and swimming and the head coach even called me to say that he really wanted me to go back on the team and whether he meant for the world champs I don't know and part of me sort of wishes I just went back along but obviously it is expensive, lacrosse is another expensive sport um, like a helmet could cost you £150 easily which is pretty much the most essential part of your, your kit because the ball and lacrosse is like pure rubber so obviously when that comes shooting to, towards you, if you get hit on your head with a helmet, it can be quite sore. So imagine like what it's going to be like if you don't have a helmet on, right? Um, like some people actually get really bad concussion in lacrosse. Like it's actually quite an aggressive sport. Um, something that I didn't really think about. I know, like going if you like listen to what I said at the start, I was like looking for sports that didn't really have a high injury risk, but it turns out lacrosse actually does. Um, but you've got also got like your kit such as specialized shoes, elbow pads, shin pads and all that adds up and unfortunately at that moment in time I just couldn't do it um, which was harder than I thought it would be to do so like I didn't realize I would have like enjoyed a sport as much as I did swimming obviously swimming is always going to be my number one sport it's always going to be my favorite I'm not going to have anything that um I like more than swimming but there was just some things in lacrosse that swimming didn't give me which I think is why I liked it you know the, the team stuff that sort of culture um, <clears throat> which I experienced at the, the lacrosse training camp as well not just at the university training and obviously I've sort of had to pause my career in lacrosse if, if we can even call it that um, but I do believe I do have like unfinished business there like I do want to like go back to it at some point in the future um, but just at this time like some things have like happened and of course I would have loved to have went to the world championships it was in San Diego it would have been an absolute opportunity of a lifetime and then hopefully next year go to the Olympics with swimming obviously if I managed to do both it would have been absolutely epic but things haven't worked out that way and perhaps something better is planned for me which is still yet to unfold. So in terms of my last year of university as a whole, it was absolutely incredible. Um, better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I connected with so many amazing people, obviously having like been out of university for a year and a half due to Covid, I could connect with friends I hadn't seen for that length of time, actually go and meet them in person and not like between a screen. Um, obviously I had thousands of opportunities that came my way as well which I definitely think was down to lacrosse helping me detach from so many things and one thing to note about this is that one of the key things about law of attraction is that in order for you to manifest 
things into your life. You have to detach from the outcome. So you have to not worry about how things unfold. You not have to not worry about um, how they're going to happen, when they're going to happen. And for me, I think lacrosse helped me do that because I enjoyed it so much. I was sort of being present. I was being in the moment. And I think that's why all these opportunities came my way, did the way they did. And, you know, I got so many to a point that it actually became overwhelming. Like I had to turn down lots of things because I just couldn't squeeze any more things into my time. Obviously, I was on top of my uni work, ahead of my deadlines. I was training well in the pool. And obviously, like I say, lacrosse was going well. So taking on any more could have probably impacted the performance in all those areas which I didn't really want to do. Um, I completed my dissertation, which I did on space tourism, which was really interesting. And then if anyone is listening as a university student, the best advice I can give you is do your dissertation on something that interests you. Don't do something that, you know, is a very common thing or something that you might think has a lot of data. Do something that you enjoy because you're going to be doing this research project for the last year of your university time. And that's what, three, four, maybe five months? It is a long time to be doing one piece of research. So make sure that is definitely something that you um, enjoy. And, you know, you might think that space tourism is quite new, but space tourism was first coined, I think it was around the 1990s, I can't remember off the top of my head. So it actually has been around for some time. Um, I graduated with a 2-1, which was great. Whoop, whoop. And now I'm going to be quite cynical here and say that, you know, it is only a piece of paper. And what is far more valuable, at least in my opinion, is the moments, the people you meet, the memories you make, the nights out, all the things that you do with your uni mates is far more valuable than that degree or that piece of paper, you know. And I think when you sort of realise that, it just makes the whole sort of journey so much more special, I guess. Um, and obviously let's not forget about the growth you do as a person as well like I have I, like, I can only speak for myself like I've grown massively and it's 100% down to all the people that I've met along this crazy four year journey so if you were part of that and you're listening right now I am so so grateful for you and now in terms of something it has been a roller coaster. so when I got back into the pool in 2021 I was so motivated and looking forward to the new season, which was a main thing, and just getting stuck in. However, we didn't actually have a coach for a good couple of of weeks, so the season did kind of feel like it was sort of like stagnating and it was like dragging on, Um, and it felt like it sort of started later than I hoped for, which obviously is absolutely no one's fault. Like Sometimes these things happen um, and they're sort of like out with our control. And in terms of my performance, I hadn't swam as well as I would have liked, nor that I am capable of, which is really, really frustrating. However, I did manage to qualify for an international meet in Edinburgh, which was my first ever, which was pretty good. And I wouldn't blame lacrosse for my lack of progress made in the pool because I think I actually complimented it. Like I said, the thing with lacrosse is I found that I was able to detach from different things from studying and from swimming so it kind of was like for me it was a sort of like outlet um and because it is sort of an aggressive sort of sport i could actually get that frustration i could get that out there um so i definitely think it complemented my training and my studies um so i definitely don't think it hindered it at all but i definitely have a strong feeling that it was down to what i was doing in, in the gym or should i say lack of i think because one of the reasons i stay off campus as well so most of the time I had to do a gym session either before a swim or after so it was basically doing like a double session and I couldn't really get into a routine either because the training times that we had were quite sporadic and I ended up having to have like lunch at different times each day just because of the way that our training times fell so I definitely think lack of routine was played a huge role in this and obviously one of my first ever episodes on the podcast was talking about the importance of having a routine and through this sort of like period I was sort of reminded why having a routine is super important. Now as I was coming closer to the end of my university um, journey I was beginning to think about what I would do post-university. Now I still worked at the gym and 
still do at the university and love working with different people, taking classes, getting to know people, helping people on their own sort of fitness journeys. But I didn't really know what I wanted to do post-university. And one of my lecturers is actually was actually um, a researcher into the psychology behind athlete transitions, athlete career paths, talent, that sort of stuff. So I reached out to them and to have a quick chat about what I wanted to do going forward. So I told them literally my entire journey in sport, what I've been through, the setbacks I've faced, the challenges I've been up against, especially as a late starter to the sport. And they told me that um, I actually had a talent. Now, no one has ever told me that before. So I was kind of like taken aback. And whenever I get sort of positive feedback or positive comments I just sort of like they go straight over my head I'm like oh, okay whatever um but because they were a professional and obviously they studied this sort of research area I was kind of thinking like I actually need to trust what they're saying here like what they're saying must have some element of truth in it and they told me that obviously I was still young that I am passionate enough to achieve whatever I want based off of what I told them and like they could obviously gauge that I was passionate from the way I was speaking, the way I was sort of like handling myself and in all honesty all I ever saw myself doing post university was swimming. Now the challenge I faced was where do I train? Like I couldn't train with my university team as I was no longer a student so I possibly could have trained myself but Like, who is going to keep me accountable when I'm not, you know, feeling great when I'm in training? Like, who's going to push me when I need to push? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's very hard to train on your own because I feel like it's very easy to slide into sort of like, oh, I'll do it later or I can just take it easy. Whereas when you have someone there, whether it's a coach or a friend, they can sort of help you keep accountable. So I had lots of chats with coaches, swimmers, I know and people who have a lot of experience in this area and every single one of them told me just go for it and it was really really weird because I just felt like every single conversation that I was having was sort of telling me was a sort of like in a way it was like a sign to tell me that you know you're on the right path keep going the way you're going so that is what I'm trying to do Now, don't get me wrong, it has been very, very tough the last six months, and I feel like I still need a bit of help along this path. Now, the reason I don't want to retire right now is because it just doesn't feel right to. Like, I don't feel like the time is right to retire. And, you know, it isn't because I'm stubborn and I want to see this through, and it isn't because I don't want to see myself as a failure if I don't execute the goals I set myself. It is because it just doesn't feel right. My gut tells me that it would be ro- a, the wrong decision, and you know your gut never lies. Now, I have no idea how the next year or so will pan out, or when it will pan out. But all I know is that everything will work out eventually, and what that looks like, I have no idea. In December last year, so basically just a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago. I raced in Edinburgh, which was my first competition since graduating back in June last year, and obviously coaching myself, and I actually swam okay given how much I had trained. Now, I was just outside my personal best by half a second, and that was on the back of about three sessions a week, and probably one gym session, which for me is pretty, pretty awful. Like when I was racing at my peak before COVID, I was doing nine pool sessions and three gym. So basically, I was doing three times less than what I've I've done previously to get to racing my peak, right? I am starting to find it a bit challenging and I I think it's because I've trained myself for so long and I'm not sort of sure how sustainable it is because I know what works for me and being in some sort of group environment is just what I respond to best. So swimming hasn't been as plain sailing as I would have liked, but sometimes you have to go through a sort of rough patch in order to sort of have like a big break and you know get to the good stuff so I'm just sort of seeing it as that and putting all my faith in the universe that everything will work out eventually. Now another thing I should mention is that I am now on TikTok. I mean I was on TikTok before but I didn't really post a lot but I now do post daily on swimming, mindset, fitness, health, 
love attraction all that good stuff so if you are listening and want to give me a follow over there then please do it really helps me grow my content and spread more positive positivity by reaching more people and i will continue to keep making good content and my name is lewis underscore condi on there and my goal for this year is to try and get to 5,000 followers and if i can perhaps 10k and if you can help me achieve that then i would be super super grateful so that has been a quick tour of what has happened so far the last time in swimming university and who would have thought lacrosse so where am i going to take this podcast going forward so i do have a few solo episodes planned that i will record soon and i have a huge ton of guests i have been researching who i would love to get on here and talk about their stories their mindset and just different perspectives and some of them you may have heard of before some of them you may have not now I have a huge list that consists of entrepreneurs, nutritionists, law of attraction experts, business owners, psychologists, sleep experts, and just some normal people who have stories to share about their mental health, and even someone who describes himself as a people fixer. Now, I can't wait to get back into this again, and I hope I continue to make episodes you enjoy, are relatable, and learn a thing or two, whether that's about nutrition, life, or whatever and most importantly help your own mindset so with that stay fit stay safe and i shall see you on the next one